You may recognize this alcohol ink tumbler from my previous video. Once the tumbler was finished, even after 24 hours, its surface remained sticky. With very little experience with epoxy crafting, I gave this tumbler another day to dry. Then another week. After about two weeks of being still sticky like this, I became suspicious something went wrong. In this video, I will attempt to take the sticky epoxy off this tumbler using a heat gun. I am using a simple heat gun the most epoxy turners come bundled with. I want to try out if it's powerful enough to warm up epoxy and then I want to find out if epoxy will come off just as easily as I saw in other YouTube video. I am simply placing the heat gun as close as possible to the epoxy tumbler surface, blow it with hot air and wait and see what will happen. After a few moments, you can see that under the epoxy surface you are starting to get something that looks like an air bubble. This could indicate epoxy has detached from the tumbler's steel surface and epoxy will be easy at this stage removable using a paint scrape or a blade knife. So after about two weeks of waiting for the epoxy tumbler to dry, I did some research to find out what could cause this issue to make sure I can avoid the same situation in the future. I am suspecting three things could possibly cause me this trouble. I did not measure two epoxy parts properly. I did not stir two epoxy parts properly or I used too much alcohol ink, which broke the chemical reaction in pr and prevented epoxy from hardening.
with the knife, I'm able to scrape off an epoxy area of the same size as the bubble that was showing up under the surface. What I see here is that if you are not quick enough to scrape off the epoxy once you get the air bubble under the epoxy surface, the epoxy will sit back down. The air bubble disappears and the epoxy now warmed up got even more sticky than was before. It feels like scraping warm chewing gum off a metal surface. On a top of it, the base paint is not coming off the tumbler so easy either. As soon as I scrape a bit of the sticky mess of the tumbler, it immediately sticks to the blade of the knife. And as I try to scrape more, the sticky epoxy from my knife is just getting transferred from one place on the tumbler surface to another. I have to shuffle between scraping the tumbler surface and cleaning off the blade knife. Definitely a painful process and not as easy as I thought. I will try to do a close-up of the tumbler surface so you can see the forming bubble a bit better. Now when we see what kind of results we are getting with the heat gun method, let's talk about benefits compared to other epoxy removal methods. This method is quick. Within a few seconds you can heat up the epoxy to the point when it will start to peel off the tumbler surface. I find it very good complementary technique for the acetone method. The acetone method is very powerful, but sometimes on the tumbler areas where the epoxy tends to be the most thick, like a tumbler bottom for example, 
the acetone does not have enough power to separate the thickest epoxy from the tumbler. Of course, we could discuss I am not using enough acetone, but perhaps when you have a tumbler with a very thick layer of epoxy, you may want to get rid the most of using the heat gun and then for the perfect finish use the acetone method. And that is what I'm thinking I will end up doing here. In order to get the perfect smooth clean tumbler surface, I just don't see the heat gun would be able to achieve the desired results. Not sure if you can see it in this video, but I want to highlight one thing. As I'm warming up the epoxy, the epoxy is releasing clearly visible thick white smoke, which I believe is toxic. Therefore, always perform this epoxy removal technique in a properly ventilated area and whenever possible wear a mask.
Now, when I had enough of scraping and breathing in the toxic fumes, I will give this tumbler an acetone bath. I will wrap the tumbler with tissue papers and once completely covered, I will wrap the tumbler with a plastic foil. I will leave the top open so I can pour the acetone on the tumbler. I will keep pouring acetone until I see 100% of all the tissues are soaked with acetone. Once the tissues are completely wet, I will seal off the top of the tumbler with a foil to prevent the acetone from evaporating. The longer the tissues stay wet, the longer the epoxy will be exposed to acetone which will make my job with epoxy removal that much easier. Once the tumbler is completely waterproofed and sealed, I will put the tumbler into a Ziploc bag and let it marinate overnight.
So what do I think about today's experiment with the heat gun? In another video on YouTube, the lady demonstrating this method was stripping off epoxy from the glitter tumbler. I am trying to replicate the same thing with alcohol ink tumbler. Also, in my case, the epoxy was not cured properly and was sticky even before I started using the heat gun. So we are definitely not comparing apples to apples. Perhaps the removal would be easier if epoxy was hard and cured properly. Maybe the glitters played also an important role in the other video. The glitter could create a thicker layer of epoxy, which is then much easier to peel off the steel tumbler surface when using a heat gun. I guess there is only one way to find out, and that is by creating a glitter tumbler and try to take off the epoxy layer using a heat gun. One last thing before ending this video. The main reason why I would probably stick with the acetone method in the future are the toxic fumes. I would not think that epoxy would smoke so much by heating it up. I hope you have learned something new today and found this video useful. Thank you for watching and for your support. I will see you in my next video.